Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, the show that is part of the Simply Luxurious Life online destination. Visit the blog, thesimplyluxuriouslife.com to find the show notes for each podcast episode, as well as much more weekly content to elevate your everyday and deepen your contentment. From recipes, motivational posts, videos of the cooking show series, style and decor inspiration, French and British inspired content, and the reader's favorite regular weekly post, this and that, which goes live on the blog every Friday. Now to today's episode. Welcome to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. I'm your host, Shannon Abels. And whether you're listening on your commute, exercising, working in the garden, or sitting down with a hot cup of tea or a cafe au lait, thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. Welcome to the 305th episode of The Simple Sophisticate. Today we're going to talk about bedtime daily rituals and how to create a restful slumber every single night and the essential details that I've found that work for me. Now before I get into this list, because I'm going to share a lot of these with you, I want to give you an idea of what our petit plaisir is that I'll be sharing at the end of today's episode. It is a book. It is a book that... I first thought, yeah, this might be an interesting read. I'll give it a shot. I waited, I waited. I finally started reading it and I found I really enjoyed it. And I think you will too. So stay tuned as we'll talk about that at the end of our conversation today. But today's focus is on the 36 bedtime daily rituals and essential details to ensure a rest full slumber. I want to begin with a quote from Ariana Huffington. Many of you know she wrote a book called The Sleep Revolution. And just a simple quote here, but I think it focuses the importance on sleep in our lives. Quote, discover the great ideas that lie inside you by discovering the power of sleep. And I like that she's taking it to the next level. It's not just this necessity. Yes, we realize it's a necessity, but maybe if we start to see it too as an opportunity when we get those deep nights sleep, to really tap into our creativity, our, those ideas that are waiting to be hatched, so to speak, it might be a bigger motivator to really invest in it. Now, my goal with sleeping is to not have to wake up with an alarm clock. I would like to be able to let the body and the mind in tandem wake up after having received the necessary amounts of sleep. My goal as I move forward in my adult life, is to have more mornings awoken only by the morning murmurs of the fresh air, the bird song, the quiet of the house, as the sun begins to gently start the day. If you have ever experienced jet lag, you know what it feels like, what it sounds like when your body and your mind speak asking, why aren't we sleeping right now? Or I'm not ready to go to sleep. Why do you want to go to sleep? Whether you are traveling across multiple time zones or not, your body and mind need deep, consistent rest. And when we listen to and honor what we hear, we begin to live a life of healthy harmony. We are better able to manage our emotions, stay present, be patient, think clearly, and so much more. Sharing the nine benefits of a good night's sleep a couple years ago, I have no doubt you know the importance and value of a good night's sleep. But knowing and then creating a space in our sanctuaries to offer a nightly restful slumber can be two different things. So today, I am inspired by the completion of my primary bedroom's restyling. In fact, it was just last week that um, a good friend and expert in decor hung my curtains that we've been waiting about three, four months to number one, get the fabric in and then have made And that was the final piece. And I've already shared a post back in February of the progress that was made, but the room is done and I'm excited to share it with you. I'll be sharing a detailed tour of with before and after photos 
as well as all the details, links, and decisions behind my choices during the final week of April. So next Wednesday, if you want to stop by as a way of introducing that particular tour, I wanted to introduce today's episode, sharing these 36 bedtime rituals and essential details for a restful slumber. Because when we keep these things in mind, if we are redoing our bedroom or restyling or simply decorating a new space where we're going to sleep, these little details actually play a significant role. So forward thinking as well as remaining present are advisable for living a life of contentment. However, for me, it was reflecting back upon times in my life when I felt contentment. Those moments have been really helpful. And so when I reflected back to my teenage years, I was reminded of how I was able to live without waking up with an alarm clock. No, my mother did not wake me up. I was not one of those students or children. I, I would just naturally wake up in the morning and I still had a busy life. I, I, you know, I had my academics, I had my sports, but I was someone who usually went to bed fairly early. I never really fought that. And so my body got a lot of rest. And as I'm looking back on those years, Being able to rise early without the clock, without rushing, I didn't really feel any worries. I didn't have to get rid of anything that wasn't working. And I asked myself, how are you able to do that? What was going on? And so that's kind of what took me a while to figure out. Um, It's taken me 20 years, I'd say, to get to the ahas and to be able to make a life or build a life that allowed me to live in such a way. But it's been worth the exploration. Because those nights when I go to sleep naturally and wake up without an alarm clock are just like, they're priceless. They're priceless. While taking time, my bedroom decor, as well as my daily rituals surrounding sleep, cultivate a necessary portion of a daily life I deeply savor and look forward to and find incredibly life lifting when I consciously prioritize my sleep, which has been essential to enjoying my days. So let's first get into, I have a couple lists. So there's a total of 36 things I'm going to share with you today, but they're broken down into actually three different lists. And the first list is detailing essential details. So actual concrete, tangible things to have in your bedroom that will help ensure a good night's sleep. So let's get to that list. The essential details. Number one, easily accessible and easy to use dimmable bedside table lamps or wall sconces. Now, I had previously had lamps that were not well made. They looked okay, but they were all I could fit afford in my budget. And that's what we have to do sometimes in our life. And I I, I held on to these lamps for 15 years because um, they did look well, decent in my um, decor. But when I could finally buy a pair of bedside lamps that were dimmable, that quickly and easily turned on without having to fuss and muss and find the cord. Da, 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 da. Oh, it's made starting the day so much nicer. And some people do the wall sconces where it's attached to your wall. Whatever it is, make it dimmable. It will make a tremendous difference. And it seems so simple, but it is absolutely profound because sometimes you need more light when you're reading a particular uh, book or a particular time of night. And sometimes you just want a dim light Because your eyes don't need to be woken up yet. Your mind is not ready yet. So that's number one. Number two, choose tranquil wall covering, whether it's paint or wallpaper. Pay attention to how it makes you feel. For me, as you'll see, I think I've shared shared this already in my um, photo for today's um, episode. I chose a wallpaper that is beige and white in print and has natural mother nature plants finds kind of design for me, mother nature and those kind of details calm me down, but I also didn't want a bright or busy colored wallpaper. I wanted to relax my eyes, my mind, and I needed to bring more light into my bedroom because I have a North facing bedroom and the white in this print reflects the, the little light that there is around the room really nicely compared to what I had. So just consider how rooms make you feel. Think about your travels. Think about different family homes you've been to and how you felt in those spaces. And when you choose or find the right color or print, you're going to know and invest in yourself because it will make a difference. Number three is to find small trays for your bedside table or tables. 
as I'll share later in this list, as a handful of things that I always have in my side trays on my tables. And it just makes sure that they're, it kind of keeps it organized. It keeps it um, clean to the eye, but it also enables me to quickly find what I'm looking for when the lights are not on and say, I need a glass of water really quickly or chapstick or lip balm. I'm looking for that pen that, you know, you can't seem to find if it's just loose on the tabletop. So this is a catch-all, but it's something that can look really nice as well. Four, as I just mentioned, is a glass of water, a full glass of water. And sometimes if you have room, a carafe, so you have more water if you need it. I always have a glass of water when I go to bed at night. And um, especially here in Bend where it's very dry, uh, if I don't have my humidifier on, I absolutely need water. So have room or space for that. And make sure it's a glass that doesn't tip over easily, just in case your lights aren't on and you tip it over um, or you nudge it with your hand when you're looking for it. Five is an investment item. But when I made this decision in 2018, after having traveled to France and stayed and traveled around the country for about a month, I never went back. This is the decision I've made for my sheets. Linen sheets, pillowcases, always. Doesn't have to be a linen duvet. I have a cotton duvet, actually. It's what actually lays against my skin, my body, and allows the my skin to breathe. And I use this year in and year out, winter, summer. It keeps me cool or warm, whatever I need. Now, some people worry about linen because you have to. They think they have to iron the whole thing. No, you don't. I just iron the top six inches that are seen. The rest comes out, dries on the line, and I use it because it's going to get wrinkled again. The moment I've had to sleep in cotton sheets, my sleep is not as comfortable. It feels hot and sticky, and they're nice sheets that I've slept in cotton. Not the same as linen. Linen is absolutely worth investing in. So that's number five. Number six is to find a top blanket for your bed. That's only for napping. I mean, it looks really nice in your bed too. But when you take a nap, you don't want to get underneath the sheets and underneath the covers and whatnot, but you do want something to cover you. So find a a blanket that's big enough that you can just pull up to cover yourself for a quick nap. In fact, after I tape this podcast episode, that's what I'm going to do, and I'm looking forward to it. Um, even if you have to piece together two favorite throws, um, I'll share with you what I did for my bedroom. I was so excited about this decision by my friend, um, and I was like, yes, because I loved the throw that we had found, but there wasn't one that was big enough. And I was like, no, can we figure out a way? And she said, oh, yeah. And sure enough, it works, but it also looks nice on the bed. So that's number six. Number seven, welcome in lavender lotion, hand lotion. I or any kind of lotion that has a subtle scent, or if you don't want a scent, just a lotion that makes your hands feel good, especially um, right before you go to bed. It's just kind of a nice soothing ritual. Um, But I love Asatan's uh, lavender hand cream, and every night, I only use it at night, so it lasts a long time. And it's just something that smells subtly, just really refreshing, lavender essential oil, and it just... it's, it's lovely. Number eight is to have lip balm by the bed. And number nine is to have a candle if you want to. Some people do not. That's absolutely fine. And, and safety reasons, I get that. Um, and then have a match striker there. We had an entire episode last year on match strikers and they look nice. So they don't just have, a, you don't have a box of, you know, matches somewhere that just kind of clutters up the space, but they look really nice and they allow you to strike the match right on the um, object, which they're fantastic. They're simple, they're small, and they serve a purpose. That's number nine, candles and match striker. And number 10 is, as I mentioned, have a writing utensil handy. If you, you are someone who likes to journal in bed, welcome in a pen that will just stay there all the time, no matter what. It doesn't go anywhere. It just always is there when you want to write. And speaking of that, number 11 is have a journal. Um, as we'll talk about on the, in the daily rituals, journaling nearly every day is very therapeutic and calming and is healthy. I think with regards to working through the day, no matter what happened. Number 12 is to have a book or books for you, which, um, are calming to the mind. So these would not be the books to, um, you know, take to bed that are stressful or, trying to teach you something that might be overwhelming or exhausting or have to reading. This is the reading that you enjoy that calms your mind. 13 
is to choose a window treatment that enables you to open your window, but also provide privacy when you need it. So whether it's blinds or curtains, make sure you find something that allows you to let fresh air in if you ever want that. And also make you feel safe and private, um, have a private sanctuary um, from prying eyes, if you, depending on what your neighbor situation is. Number 14 is to have a bolster. Uh, this was introduced to me by my friend who is the decorator. She is Belgian. And it was one of those things like, well, of course I should have one of those. I never thought about that. <laughs> and as I shared with my subscribers um, a couple months ago, it's made all the difference in my ability to read in bed and to sleep well. And in fact, this bolster in French is called a traversin, a traversin. And we're going to go into detail about exactly how to use it, all the options with um, a bolster or traversin that you can consider in a post this summer. So stay tuned. Number 15 is to welcome in the natural light. Um, I know some people like blackout blinds. That's fine. But natural light... Um, can be healthy and helpful too. So something to think about to give yourself options. How can I let the natural light in? And 16 is with regards to the items you bring into your room and how you redecorate. Make sure it's a mix of prints and solids, textures and fabrics. So uh, everyone's going to have a different percentage of prints versus solids. But there's a reason for that, and it all comes down to balance. As I was listening and watching Rita Koenig's um, interior design course this past summer from Create Academy, which I highly recommend, obviously she has her own aesthetic, but I think her lessons on how to create that balance were really helpful. And whether it's large prints with small prints or one print with all solids, making sure all the textures, you know, you don't have one that's overwhelming, not all cotton not all linen, not all wood, not all metal, things like that. And speaking of that, number 17 is to include the three pillars of tangible decor details, such as, well, not such as, they are natural fabrics. Make sure you have some sort of natural fabrics um, for your bed linens or your upholstery, um, any of those. Um, And number, number two is with regards to metals, make sure that you do have some metals because you're probably going to have some of your lamp or something or your light fixture, your doorknobs, um, be thoughtful about those. And the third is natural material. That could be the wood on the bed frame or your dressers. It could be the bamboo or seagrass. If you have seagrass in your flooring, if you can pay attention to those, to those three things. And just be cognizant of, you know, sticking to the same finish or similar hue, but maybe slightly different finishes. So all brass, but maybe you have some bright and then maybe you have some polish and maybe you have some age, but you still are in the same family. Um, When it comes to the wood, you know, paying attention to they're all kind of in the same hue as well. Um, Just little details. And this might not be something you can do right away because it's expensive or it takes time to find what you're looking for, but just being cognizant of that. And eventually the room really starts to sing over time. So that's number 17. Include the three pillars of tangible decor to create that mix. Number 18, the last thing on our essential details list is for a calm aesthetic, select three colors. And then within those three colors, you can find different hues of those colors. And you'll see this in my bedroom um, tour when I go um, through it on the 28th of April on the blog. I've stuck to three colors and it helps me relax. It doesn't overwhelm my mind, but at the same time, it adds layer and depth Um, Now, I'm no decor expert, but I am learning, and I had someone there that was teaching me, and I'm so grateful. So those are 18 essential details to consider um, welcoming into your bedroom for restful slumber every single night. Now, I want to, before we transition into the items to remove, think about what Amy Poehler says here. Sleep helps you win at life. You know, it sounds so simple, but it's so tremendously powerful. It's such a fundamental component of living well. Now, there are a handful of items really quickly I want to share with you of things to limit or remove. And I share these from my own experience. Now, again, everyone's going to be different. So maybe this is an opportunity to remind yourself to reflect on things that you've removed or you've added and what they make you or how they make you feel. 
So for me, having any access to the internet is something I've removed. The only slight, you know, um, deviation is that I let myself listen to classical music and it comes from an app, but I will not let myself search the internet in my bedroom at all anymore. I know what it does to my brain and my mind, and I don't relax when I'm doing that. Even if it's reading something lovely, <laughs> put it in my hand, or if, if you prefer um, your Kindle, you're still not accessing the internet, you're still just reading, that's another way to kind of get around that. Also, consider limiting or reducing excessive photos and decor. This is something I've learned over time. Whether it's the walls and having excessive photos or paintings, tabletops, uh, bedside tables, or shelves, the less I have, the more relaxed I am. In fact, I have nothing hanging on my walls in my bedroom because the wallpaper does the speaking and it's, I love it. I don't know if I will ever add anything to the walls. Um, I like to keep it calm. And if you do have solid uh, wallpaper uh, or, or paint, it might make a difference to add one significant painting or photo. Um, it's up to you, obviously. Everyone's going to do what's different for them. But be conscious of how the stuff makes you feel because it does make you feel something. You may think, oh, it makes me feel loved. But that's the other thing. Think about what it is. Is it the picture or is it the memory? And maybe you can bring that memory in in a different way. So just lots of things. These are things to consider. The other thing that you might want to consider limit or removing is the bright overhead lighting or fluorescent lighting. I do not know how people wake up with bright lights. My bedside lights are bright enough when they go full tilt. And that's enough for me. My bathroom has really bright lights. I just, I just, for bedroom, keep it soft, keep it welcoming, keep it lower, not on the ceiling. And then remove the television. Um, I think most of us are doing that anyway, but that's definitely something to get out of the bedroom. Um, decor items that hold reminders of the past or pain or loss or hurt. So any any item that for whatever reason for you, it reminds you of something that causes just, you know, pain or loss or hurt. Other items may not bring negative feelings, but you keep them for that reason. But on the flip side, be cognizant of that. Um, even sheets, um, that's something to consider too. A fresh thing, of, a fresh set of sheets um, when you've shifted from one relationship to another. I mean, there's so many little things based on what how your mind works, but just pay attention to those little details and tend to them. They're not silly. They're not frivolous if it makes a positive difference in your life. And the last one seems obvious, but just a reminder, and I have to remind myself of this every once in a while, my life gets really busy and I'm changing something that'll hopefully reduce that busy soon. But um, get rid of the dust and the dirt and the laundry or tossed about clothing. A clean bedroom, when it's done regularly, has a way of bringing us to be more mindful of the importance that this space is in our lives and the calmer and cleaner and less cluttered we have it. We're helping ourselves get to sleep better. We're helping our minds and just go deep into our sleep and stay there. Of course, we're obviously doing this for cleanliness reasons as well, but on another level, it speaks about, Oh, I have this, still have this to do. Oh, I still have this to do. Meaning clean the house, dust the tabletop. You know, I have gradually realized in, As I've shared on my blog, every arena of my life, less is more. But when we come to our bedrooms, less is really more for something that we really need, which is a good night's sleep. Okay, so let's get into the bedtime daily rituals. I've divided them up between AM rituals and PM rituals. So when we get up in the morning and when we're going to bed. So let's start with the morning. And this first one is simply back to the item number one on my items list of essential details is number th- the first thing you would do when you wake up, gently turn on the bedside light. In other words, have the dimmable light. Do not blast your eyes with the bright, bright light. You will thank yourself for this. It makes a difference. Finish drinking that glass of water by your bed. 
that you poured prior to going to bed the night before. So maybe you did sleep entirely through the night. Woohoo! Drink that glass of water before you get up. That'll help you gradually wake up as well, and it'll start hydrating your body. Before you actually step out of bed, thoughtfully contemplate one or two things you are grateful for. You can just think about them, or you can journal or write them down if you'd like. But just being cognizant of something positive, something that you're grateful for, you're setting the tone when you do that for a great day. And the next thing is to listen or read a page or a chapter of something inspiring. This is without the internet, remember. Could be a book, could be turning on classical music, which is my case, or just turning on some kind of calm music. Choose something that lifts you well into the day. So something you've read or reading or something you're listening to. Now you're still in bed. Let the daylight in as much as possible. So you've gone through the first three steps or four actually, because we're considering turning the lights on, actually the first step. And then you know you're getting up, so start letting natural light in if the sun is up. Obviously, there's different times of year where that may not be the case. Open the windows if they are not already open, if it's the temperature allows, and it is spring, and you can hear the bird song. And then rise and put on your slippers and dressing gown or robe and start your day. (sighs) Just thinking about it makes me calmer. I actually really look forward to going to bed every night. And I actually really look forward to getting up in the morning because of my rituals. I know that sounds maybe odd, but I do love my rituals. And so when I just think about them, if it makes me feel calmer, then I know they're doing the right thing. So again, you're going to tailor this for you. And if you share your bed with a partner, that's going to make a difference. Um, But at the same time, Your sleep is valuable, so prioritize yourself as much as you would someone else because you are important. All right, let's get into the evening or the PM rituals. Number one, set your house or your home or your room temperature to a desirable level. And we talk about this in the benefits of sleep um, that I mentioned earlier, that post that I wrote a couple years ago. But you want to make sure you're cool at night. You do not want to be warm um, because you will wake up. Your body will wake up. Um, even if you are in a deep sleep, as many of us probably already know. Number two is prepare your pups. If you have dogs like myself or any pets that need to be tended to, make sure you tend to them and give them their final bathroom outing, prepare their blanket or their dog bed and get them ready for bed. If you have children, same thing. Three, draw window treatments as preferred and open a window if you also would prefer that. Four, turn on the sleep timer for any music or a listening element you enjoy falling asleep to. And five is situate your pillows. As you'll see next week, I have quite a few pillows on my bed, but I love all of them. Um, They proportionally fit with my particular headboard. You're likely going to, if you have a bolster, move the bolster if it's in the front to the back behind your standard pillows, if you're sleeping with standard pillows, and then remove all the extra pillows and put them somewhere. And, um, Yeah, you're just basically telling your body, your being, the space, we're getting ready to go to bed. All these little rituals, they're simple, they're easy, but they slowly and gradually get your mind focused on what it's going to be doing. Number six is use that hand lotion we talked about earlier, that lavender hand cream. If you use any heavy cream for your feet, go ahead and add that. Lip balm, anything where you're just, again, kind of nurturing yourself. You've already washed your face. You've already gotten to your pajamas or your chemise or whatever you're wearing. And these little rituals, again, tell the mind that it's settling in and also provide comfort to you. Seven, pour a full glass of water and place it in the tray um, on your bedside table. If you have a carafe, fill that as well. If you would like to light a candle, light a candle. And if you don't want to light a candle, you can spritz the bed linens with a favorite scent. Also could be lavender, but there's some wonderful scents out there. And number nine is remove your slippers and your dressing gown and or robe. Place them nearby for easy access in the morning when you wake up. And now you're in bed. So maybe the first thing you do, put the day to bed by journaling. Journaling any thoughts. Vent a little bit write a list of things you're grateful for. Just work through things. Just share what happened in the day. If you're someone who likes to keep a record of the day, whatever it is, then read 
something that does not add drama or worry, but rather brings a smile or tickles your mind. And then lights out as you're ready. I often read until my eyes can't stay open. (laughs) That's when I know it's time to go to bed. Sometimes that's five minutes and sometimes that's quite a while. Then lights out and just enjoy. Now, if you can't fall asleep, something I've shared in previous episodes um, is to take deep breaths, count of six in, count of six out and exhale. And that's what you're thinking about. You're just thinking about counting, literally counting, and you will be focused on the counting, not your thoughts. And you will be surprised if you do this, how quickly you'll be, well, you won't even know because you'll be asleep, (laughs) but it's the practice of not necessarily breathing so much, although you're doing that. And that's what's the helpful part because you're deeply breathing. It's the counting because it focuses your attention on the present and gets you out of your thoughts, wherever those are going or whatever they are. As the Dalai Lama says, sleep is the best meditation and you're helping yourself get to that sleep. So that's number 12 of daily rituals. So as we wrap up here, having shared 36 items either to include in your bedroom or daily rituals that you can welcome into your morning or evening routine, keep in mind that the decorating process, it's going to be personal. It's going to be unique to you. And tending to it is incredibly helpful. But what I have discovered over the years, and I shared this briefly earlier in today's episode, is I am more often removing items rather than adding them to my bedroom. In so doing, the room's restfulness improves, my sleep deepens, and there are fewer items to preoccupy my mind or trip over. (laughs) Keep it simple. Keep it thoughtful with your intentionality and your choices. Invest in quality. And yep, You're cultivating a simply luxurious sleep space and you'll find yourself living incredibly well and more specifically sleeping incredibly well. Because when we sleep well, our waking hours are far more positive and fruitful and simply incredibly enjoyable. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. The entire list or all three of those lists are technically there's four lists, isn't there? Four lists are on today's show notes, the simply luxurious life.com slash podcast 305. And I've also included three other posts. One is specifically about the benefits of getting a good night's sleep. I've also, because earlier this year, just this March, actually, I shared four core components to creating a home for a healthy well-being. And if you're curious about the progress on the bedroom decor, In February, I shared, I um, posted 10 decor tips for creating a private sanctuary for rest and repose. You'll find even more inspiration in that post and see before pictures and progress pictures. But do stop by Wednesday, April 28th on the blog. You'll need to become a top tier subscriber because those are exclusive posts for top tiers. Um, Any home decor posts that go through my home are um, only for top tier Um, but it will be detailed. It'll be full of pictures and um, all sorts of links and ideas, hopefully to inspire your project. But we still have a petite plaisir to get to. So I'll be right back to share that with you. So this week, I actually have two petite plaisirs for you. The first one is something that I have been using for about three or four years now. And it's a way to kind of add a simple luxury to that evening or that sleep bedtime routine. I mentioned that I like to have a glass of water uh, on my bedside table. And what I will do is I will fill up a beautiful La Rocher water glass. Or one of them looks like a goblet, the other looks like a tumbler. And it's pretty sturdy, pretty strong base. So if I do kind of nudge it, it won't tip over quickly or easily. You can find a bunch of different styles of these nice glass French tumblers on Wayfair. You can find some on Sur La Table. And La Rocher is still selling them on their direct website, but there are fewer of them there. But just having those glasses that are designated just for your bedtime ritual is is a way to elevate this, this routine or this part of the day. So I will provide links to Wayfair because I found that they have the most to explore as far as size and color even. Some of them are different colors. Most of them are just clear. And price options. They're fairly inexpensive, less than $20, so it's kind of nice. Um, but the second petite plaisir, and this is a way of reminding you that in May, beginning on 
Sunday, May 16th, and running for a full week until the 23rd, is the Simply Luxurious Live's third annual British Week. Yep, I am so excited to explore all things British that particular week and kind of give a taste as to what we're going to be doing and talking about. And one book that I really just enjoyed, and I literally finished it this morning. Um, It was one of the books that I read before I got out of bed. I read the last chapter. It's called Long Live the Queen, 23 Rules for Living from Britain's Longest Reigning Monarch by Brian Kalowski. And this was published just this past November. And it does share, as the title says, 23 Rules for Living. Now, you may think this sounds frivolous and superficial. It is not. It is part biography. Um, It is part science as far as bringing in various research on, you know, the power of the mind and rest and decision making. There's so many different things in here, but um, I have found many of the the rules she, as he says, lives by to be thoughtful and I'm, and, and made me contemplate, okay, so that's something to consider. That's what I should let go. And in fact, last Monday's post, if you haven't visited and read that yet, was inspired largely, not entirely, but largely by this book and one of her own rules with regards to dealing with negative news, drama from people in your life, how to deal with it. And the post is titled An Essential Skill for the Most Peace-Filled and Resilient Life. I'll link to it. It's worth checking out. It's, as I mentioned, it has to do with how she handles all the stress that inevitably would come into her life and why she's been able to handle it and be 96 years strong. Anyway, the book is full of very digestible, readable chapters, but they are not surface. They do go deeper. They even bring biography in from different royal members of the family. It is mainly the queen, but they'll be talking about Prince Philip. They will talk about the princess a little bit, not much. They do talk, he does talk about Princess Diana. And one or two times he talks about Meghan Markle. I don't remember him talking about the Duchess of Cambridge, but I do remember her, him talking about the Duchess of Sussex once, uh, maybe twice. But it's mainly the Queen. It does go way back into her childhood and then to modern day as well. So if you want to explore that book, it has been recommended by a lot of people I've been hearing. I want to thank Reader Cannon for recommending this book after she read it. Um, Her detailed recommendation prompted me to buy it, and I have been reading it ever since it arrived and savoring one or two chapters every night or every other night um, and sometimes in the morning. So I will leave a link to that on the show notes. Long Live the Queen, 23 Rules for Living from Britain's Longest Reigning Monarch. I hope you've enjoyed this week's Petit Plaisir, where each week ideas are shared to make the everyday all the more enjoyable. Tune in to the end of each episode where I'll recommend a book, a film, a show, a recipe, anything that is a simple pleasure to satiate your sophisticated taste. I want to take a quick minute before we wrap up today to thank a review that was posted at the end of March. The title of the review is C'est Magnifique. I found this podcast at the perfect time as I dive deeper into personal growth and self-expression. I love how each episode is distinct, but all touch on meaningful topics related to well-being. I appreciate the show notes as I can review them quickly while or after listening to an episode. It's my go-to during exercise. Thank you, Shannon, for the work you put in and for all your fellow Francophiles. Thank you for sharing your review and tuning in, whether you're working out or going through your day. I always enjoy discovering how readers tune in or where they are in their lives or what they're doing in their lives while they are listening to the show. Now, with regards to the next episode, I am right in the middle of my students' AP classes um, and testing. We're right around the corner of the first and second week of May. We have our AP testing. So I'm going to hunker down and tend to that. But I'll be back with a brand new episode to kick off British Week on Monday, May 17th. The week actually begins on May 16th, but the new episode will be on Monday the 17th. And then we'll have two new episodes in June as scheduled of this podcast. And I look forward to sharing those with you as well. Until then, remember every single Monday, if there's not a brand new podcast episode, there is a brand new post to motivate you as Monday and the new week begin. So be sure to stop by. And I want to thank you for making the choice to tune in to the Simple Sophisticated Podcast. Have a beautiful week. Bon journée.
Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. For more ideas and inspiration throughout the week, visit the blog, thesimplyluxuriouslife.com, or pick up my latest book, Living the Simply Luxurious Life, Making Your Everydays Extraordinary and Discovering Your Best Self, now available on Audible and wherever audiobooks are sold, as well as in paperback and ebook versions. You can also pick up my first book, Choosing the Simply Luxurious Life, A Modern Woman guide, which is also available in paperback, ebook, and as an audiobook as well. To stay caught up on the most recent episodes of the podcast, blog post, the cooking show, and receive exclusive news as well as an extra dose of inspiration to jumpstart your weekend, subscribe to the Simply Luxurious Life's free weekly newsletter, which arrives in your inbox each Friday to enjoy with a hot cup of tea or cup of morning coffee. Until next Monday, I'm your host, Shannon Abels. Bonjour.